Guys, I've only watched the first episode of Love is Blind season six and the ending had me gasping for air. I had to stop and just lie down on the couch for a bit because it was just so much to take in. The amount of love triangles, love squares because there were even more people involved. <sighs> I can't. I'm overwhelmed. I'm getting older, I guess, because my heart is just too weak for all of these plot twists. Um, I'm quite shocked because I didn't really see it happening like that from the trailer. It looks a little bit snoozy, boring, but this is looking shipping up already. Episode one to be a really good season, but let's get into it in chronological order. And as always, do make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for reality TV recaps and pop culture celebrity news. Okay, let's go. Make me nervous, but comfortable. I am over the moon right now. Matthew, you guys, he scared the crap out of me, like um, with his list of questions that he had for people. Like um, he just comes in, hey, I need to ask you a list of questions choose a random number and I'm going to ask you a question. Go. And so a woman would answer, then she'd ask him, oh, what about you? What's your answer to that question? And then there was an instance where he's like, well, I didn't really count on answering like any questions myself. He closes his notebook and he marches out of that room. I was like, what just happened? This is so weird. You know, like, is he okay? It felt like, was it like Matthew McConaughey? He played like the psychotic guy. Was it American Psycho or something like where the guy had like no no emotions or whatever like i feel like he was that he was giving that um and it was genuinely bone chilling and terrifying just just weird so he did continuously that wasn't the only time he kept on walking out on people like mid uh date and stuff there was a woman who was answering a question yeah she was a bit long-winded but for him to just walk out instead of trying to like you know um lightly or playfully like get her to stop or like you know interject it was very very rude i really didn't like that i do feel bad for any woman who ends up with him at this point like i don't remember anyone else starting off so badly on love is blind i feel super sad there's a plot twist he ends up being not that bad a little bit later on because he finally starts opening up a bit with a woman named ad who seems like the sweetest you know piece of pie ever and i gotta say like i said earlier i feel bad for any woman who ends up with him because he's really cold um so i'm nervous for her i think with her personality she can like she can get anyone to love her right even someone like him and i feel like sometimes that's dangerous for you as a person because you can attract some kind of scary people like that. So she also does thankfully connect with somebody else. It's a younger guy named Clay who seems nice, but his fear of aging is a bit concerning to me, like points to a level of immaturity that I'm kind of nervous for, you know, I'm like, does that really belong on Love is Blind? I don't think so. Um, the guys and girls then break off into their like separate quarters and talk about their dates. And Matthew is all alone on the guy side, which isn't surprising, but it like also points to like his antisocial personality, you know? And it's like, oh, okay. Like on the one hand, I'm like, okay, it's good to see that he's not only like really like weird and cold with like women, um, he also doesn't socialize well with men either. So it's not like a sexism thing potentially, you know what I mean? I think there just might be some level of neurodivergence there. So um, if, if any at all, right? I, I can't say one way or the other, but um, moving on, Johnny and Amy seem to be forming a beautiful connection. So I am looking forward to seeing how that plays out. Then we get to see Matt and AD have a second date. Like this episode, really focus heavily on their relationship in addition to another relationship, which we'll get into a little bit later. The single mom and someone else, I forgot his name. So Matt and AD have a second date and he seems to be opening up, which is really, really good. And they talk about their feelings a bit more, which uh, is actually much deeper than the conversation that AD had on her second date with Clay. Clay and her, it was very superficial, like, oh, flirt with me, talk dirty to me, just like stupid stuff like that. Okay, now let's talk about the other couple that was very heavily featured this episode. It was Jessica and Jimmy. She is really feeling him. So she decides to tell him about her daughter. She is the first ever single parent on Love is Blind in US. So it's gonna be huge. Like, I don't think anyone from the US side is walking into this uh, competition or what do you call this? Experience? Experiment expecting to find a single parent because as of now, Kinetic Content, the company that produces this, has always said they don't believe in allowing single parents um, or children to be involved in this experiment, which, you know, listen, people, 
yeah, so it's gonna be, he's gonna feel blindsided, let's say. In my opinion though, Jessica is so gorgeous that even if he's not into the whole kid thing, he might accept her daughter just to be with her, you know, because I think she's probably like the hottest girl he's been with and she's so nice too. So like he could warm up, he could warm up to the entire ordeal. Before she breaks the news about her daughter, he tells her about being insecure about his family because he grew up poor and that prevented him from going after certain types of women in the past. Listen, Jessica very obviously has touched her face, okay? Which I think is wonderful. I've touched my face too, okay? So this is not a judgment. Um, like she, she very obviously has lip filler. I believe she's got chin filler. I wouldn't be surprised if she had Botox uh, for the brows and maybe um, crow's feet. And I wouldn't be surprised if she had cheek filler as well. So to me that screams like, you know, you've got disposable income because it's not cheap doing this sort of thing, you know? Um, so I wonder if that's gonna make him feel a little bit insecure as well when he sees her. But listen, she says she's okay with it because she's had her own fair share of issues with her family and whatnot and she's been through a lot so it's going to be interesting to see how they connect on that front but at this point she breaks the news about her daughter and he asks her why she didn't tell him about her earlier and to be honest i'd be really pissed if someone i were dating to waited like you know to tell me that they had kids because it's a complete an utter non-negotiable deal breaker for me. So I feel like you not only wasted my time, but you wasted your own time too, like catching feelings or developing feelings, you know? Like feelings are not gonna change what is a fundamental deal breaker for people, you know? So I do wish that you were upfront about it before like, you know, the connection, but lucky for her, it's not a deal breaker for him and he's understanding so they can continue to move forward in their relationship. And at this point he asks her, to tell her him a little bit more about his about her daughter and he goes her name's autumn why does she always go like the season like what else is autumn please in the comment section tell me one one more thing just one more thing that is autumn you know what i mean she's like her name is autumn like the season okay not like the not like the i don't know the lip balm color like what is it you know and by the way, the girl, the daughter is 10 years old, which I think isn't that bad, you know, 10 years old, it's like, all right, halfway out the house already, so that's good. Um, and so he asks about the baby daddy, like, were you guys married? Like, what kind of relationship was it? And what kind of relationship do you have now as co-parents? So Jessica tells him that it's a guy that she had known since elementary school. She moved down around a lot. And so he was her only constant and she got knocked up in high school and they broke up about a year after Autumn was born. She seems a little bit insecure that like having a child so young makes her sound like she was promiscuous when it's not really the case. It's just being young and not knowing how contraception works, right? So he tells her that he has feelings for her and he always knew that she was there for the right reasons. So I feel like that must have been a huge relief for Jessica to know that like those feelings are still there, um, you know, after she broke the big news. But wait a minute, I didn't know that he was into another woman. See, this is what I mean. Like there's just so many damn plot twists. First with Matt going from like American Psycho to being like sweet with AD. Now you've got Jimmy who seems to be in love with Jessica. You think that's gonna be end game there. And then boom, turns out he's got another love interest. We see him flirting hardcore with a woman named Chelsea. Um, and so she's got her very own big news to break to him. I remember how former Love is Blind cast members always say that like every day there is a theme to what your discussions will be typically sometimes to like help structure things. And so I think this was like the day where everybody had to reveal something big about themselves. And so that's why he was getting bombarded with this sort of information on the same day. And so her big news is that she was married, well, she's a divorcee uh, or divorcee. She's divorced. <laughs> she had, she was married at 18 years old and divorced after five years of marriage, which listen for an 18 year old, like, you know, in this era, that's pretty good. Eight, five years of marriage at that age, you know, like there's a lot of like 30 year old, 40 year olds who can't last five years of marriage now, you know? <laughs> so that's pretty good. Um, and it's just so funny what they were both doing at 18. One was getting married, the other one was having kids. So um, he says that he, that, that news doesn't scare him. She's like, he's like, listen, after the news I just got, this is nothing, it's fine. And so she starts like crying because his reaction is kind of weird. She's like, does he not like me anymore? Like what's going on? Like um, the whole thing was just very, very awkward, but you know, it just is what it is at that point. We're gonna have to wait and see how that relationship continues to develop. She's like, you know, it's fine. You're not gonna like everybody. Everybody isn't for everybody. He's like, that's like the opposite of what I'm trying to, to tell you. So it seems like he still is ready to move forward with both ladies. And so, yeah, Ooh, is this? Yeah, this is a love triangle, okay? Um, 
Actually, wait a minute. No, plot twist. My heart goes again like this. My heart is pounding. There's a fourth person. It's a guy named Trevor who is connecting really well with Chelsea, okay? And he says that she's the only one that he can see himself marrying. And she's ecstatic about it, which is like wild because she was just ecstatic about Jimmy. Guys, do you see what I mean? I'm overwhelmed right now. Um, let's go to Clay and his situation with AD. They have another date and we see him start opening up to AD about his feelings a bit more, which was nice to see. Um, I gotta say, I'm getting nervous with all these love triangles and square, squares that we're seeing. Um, but at this point, maybe this love triangle is gonna go back to just a twosome because Clay kind of gives AD the ick when he says, listen, like I need a physical description of you. I would never propose to somebody without having an idea of what they look like, which completely defeats the purpose of love is blind, right? So she's like, no, I'm not gonna give you a description. And if you can't respect it, don't pee, you know, like too bad, so sad, I'm gonna move on. I'm not gonna be mad at you, but you're not my guy because I'm not here for the physical, you know, which I thought was wonderful. So at this point, I think she's kind of like kicked Clay to the curb and focused her attention on Matt because Clay is too superficial. So she and Matt, like their bond is really deepening at this point. And he says that there are only two outcomes. He leaves the here, here with her or he leaves here like without her, meaning he just leaves brokenhearted basically. And he says that the only reason that he's there is for her, which is just so beautiful. AD gets emotional. She starts crying. And he says that his greatest accomplishment is finding her, which to me is like, all right, now it's getting weird, dude. Like, I'm sure you have, you have a lot of wonderful accomplishments. You're well-educated. You've got a wonderful career. Finding this girl like that you've known for 48 hours on a show is not your greatest accomplishment. It's too much for me at that point. It's starting to feel a little disingenuous, but listen, we're gonna go along for the ride. He says that he wants to call his mom and tell her that he found the one. And it's like, all right, listen, that I can believe because people fall hard on the show, right? And at this point, I'm like, I can't believe this is the same guy who was just so effing cold to everybody at the beginning. Like he has turned into a total sap for AD. Um, Guys, then I start going, oh my God, like they're in North Carolina, which by the way, shout out to North Carolina. I've been there once and I actually really loved it. Um, but I don't know about the racial dynamics too much there. Like, is he expecting for her to be black? Like, is that gonna be okay? Like for the both of them? Like, I feel like she knows he's white. Like she made a comment about it and she's okay with it. Even though she said that she's not, like she's never dated a white guy. She never thought she would, but she's gonna go for it. Um, but we haven't heard him speak like that. So I'm like, oh, I hope that's gonna be okay, you know? Um, and so it's like, she reads my mind because at this point she brings up race and she's like, you know, how important is like, you know, your partner's race to you? And he goes, well, it's not important at all. Why? She's like, just ask him. <laughs> and her voice cracks and it's just so funny. It's like, okay, at this point he knows you're a woman of color, but he doesn't know what color. There's so many options out there. So that's gonna be interesting to explore. At this point, Matt tells her that he doesn't want to go on any more dates. He's found the one. Um, they're supposed to have five more, but he just wants to pack it up at this point. His decision has been made. And AD says that like, you know, she feels like on the same page as well, you know? So I think, I, I thought that by the end of this episode, we we're gonna have a full blown proposal, you know? But guys, listen, another plot twist. And this is where my heart really drops because I'm getting emotionally invested in this story. And I love AD. I think she's a genuine, sweet person and I want the best for her. But back at the women's quarters, another woman also named Amber, because AD stands for Amber something. Um, there's another Amber and she's talking to AD and she says that Matt talked to her about like, you know, getting her dad's permission for him to propose or for marriage, sorry. And it's like, oh my God, AD's jaw drops because she and Matt had this discussion. He said, well, what was your dad think about me marrying you? Um, AD's dad is dead. So they had a discussion about that. And it's like, wait, Matt, you told AD that this is the only person for you. You found the one. Why are you talking about another woman and like asking her dad, you know, for her hand in marriage? All of this is just too much, you know? And then there's something else that he told this other woman uh, that she tells AD, which is, oh, he was like, oh, um, point me on a map where you are, I'll come find you, something like that. Like, and it's similar to what he told to AD that he wants to propose on a mountain or something, like pick out a mountain on a map, something like that. And then it reminds me, you know, Matt had kept on telling AD unprompted that like everything he was telling her was just to her. It was an AD exclusive, you know? And it's like, why was he saying that? Like, thou doth protest too much, you know what I mean? So 
honestly, it sounds like Matt is not a genuine person. I don't think he's there for the right reasons. And I'm going to go on the record and say this. In my opinion, I think that Matt might have a personality disorder. Okay, just by the way, he's acted in this first episode. And I feel like this is just the beginning. I think we're going to see a, a lot of real, real ugliness coming out of this man. And so I'm disappointed that he passed casting, but it is what it is. There's nothing we can do now, um, but just accept the situation. And, you know, the unfortunate side of that is that it, the situation is going to hurt a lot of people because I don't think Matt's a good person. I don't think he's there for the right reasons, but those are just my opinions. Listen, now do you guys understand why I needed a break after the first episode? I'm going to go walk my dog and just breathe because this is too much for me. This is too much for my tender heart. Let me know all your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. Subscribe for more videos. I will be recapping every episode and doing characters, character analyses as well. Okay, you guys take care. Bye. Don't forget to like the video as well.